first down now on the 25. And on the draw, Hayward, nothing. And great play made that time. Hey, we got we got some duking going on. Andre Rising and Deion Sanders. Well, I guess they are talking to one another now. Yeah, I think they finally said something. Yeah, well, how do these things get started? Well, watch. I Andre's going to come off the ball, and he's, oh, he takes a shot right at the beginning. You see, this was talked about this week. They said, Andre Risen will bloody your nose. But I got news for you. Dion's giving that whole field left hook. Did you see that? Great. A oh. That's a classic. Well, let's go to our fight expert, Ron Pitts, down on the field. Ron, what do you have? Blame it on Risen because he came off the ball tried to block and he went right to the jaw of Dion as we can see right now they're still getting into it and Matt you're right these two guys forget the helmets forget the pads they were going after it now that was going to be a 10 rounder I got personal Ron Pitts down on the side how often do we come in talking about a one-on-one -on -one battle that never really materializes and not only does it on the field in the play but it does physically Matt yeah I gotta tell you I watch Andre comes off now this is perfectly illegal he goes right up into the chest, and then he blocks again. There's nothing wrong with that. And then Dion, now they just start duking. Watch the left. I don't know. <laughs> Great fight. That's, a, that's a clap. Where's Gil Clancy when you need him? Oh. I gotta be. I gotta be honest with you. Those are the judges. One of these guys could get heaved from the game. Or both. I mean, or both. They could get bounced right out of this football game, and that could really change the whole game. You don't often see a receiver and a defensive back not downfield, but at the line of scrimmage getting into a scuffle like that. Yeah, yeah, no, they came off the line of scrimmage and rising was fine. He could block them like that. And then there was a little bit of extra push at the end. Personal foul, number 21 on the defense. It was the instigator of the fight. It is 15 yards, automatic first down. Yeah, actually, Dion is lucky that he's not thrown out of the football game because usually when that happens you get to catch a guy duking like that you're gone the only thing that would make this crowd love it even more would be if the falcons were in front and not trailing by three touchdowns or or right now they come back and throw a touchdown to andre rising and change the momentum a bit right right they can get right back in here right before the half you got a minute 50 to go third and ten the tenth play of the drive here George has time and his pass is intercepted. Uh oh, they're not catching Going him down the sideline. Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders is dancing. He's That's... looking backwards from about the 40 yard line. Oh, is he going to do a number on the crowd here? And that's the second return for a touchdown. He returned one against the New Orleans Saints in his first game, 71 yards. You think that San Francisco 49er team is happy to got him? Look him down there. The whole team down together. You take your shot that Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders has something you can never teach, and that's ex tremendous speed and explosion. See how he reads the zone? He sees that zone. That, but look at that. That should have been a completion. Instead, that's 95 yards the other way. He is still dancing 92 yard officially on the return on the pass intended for Ricky Sanders. And if that doesn't... Uh, Put a stake through the heart of this crowd. I don't know what will. Well, Sanders was penalized and now gets his revenge. Doug Bryan with the X-Factors 92-yard interception for a touchdown is one yard short of the team record set by Alvin Randolph. Boy, what a response. Deion Sanders could not have scripted this first half any differently except maybe not get a shot from Andre Risen early. Yeah, you know, and I see it looks like one of his teeth is missing. I wonder if Andre didn't knock one of those things out. Word on Deion Sanders is that he's suffering from cramps, which is why he is on the sideline. Here's the dance after the touchdown return. Well, you know, the thing is, I, I couldn't do that if I wanted to. I wouldn't even know how to do that. You see that big smile he had? There's one tooth missing right there. I think Andre uh, knocked it out. I don't Probably think not. So. Huh? I don't think so. 
Well, now he has cramps. Brilliant play by Sanders. 92 yards, tiptoeing down the sideline. There's Ryzen and Sanders. Nothing to say to each other after their fisticuffs earlier. Now this thing, no, I, this thing was a, a, was a piece of work. It's a thing of beauty. And, and I think what's happened, really, is it's got Atlanta back in it because it got the defense fired up. I mean, that's some good duking. That's some good fast swinging. And he wants more. Sanders is hit with a 15-yard penalty following. And welcome to the Dockers halftime. And folks, uh, Atlanta is trailing big to San Francisco, 28 to 3. This was expected to be a war in Atlanta. Not only was the lead for the NFC West at stake, but two guys, Andre Risen and of course Deion Sanders, on our pregame show, let it be known that there was no love lost for each other. I mean, if it was possible, I would love to everyone else to get off the field so we could just go at it one on one. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm that kind of guy. You know, I never said anything derogatory towards Dion. You know, and if he has a personal vendetta against me or a problem with me, the hell with him. Right. You know, and if he want to go one on one, we can go one on one all day. Well, that kind of a guy went at Andre Risen. These two here on a running play. Andre Risen is blocking. Dion takes offense at it, and Terry, they look like two cruiserweights going at it. A couple of children out there. <laughs> Having a bad day at work, it looks like. But this is that's the silliest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then you run backwards. I mean, <laughs> don't run backwards, Andre. Bust him one if you're going, you know. And then on top of all of that, you know, I think Gordon McCarter, the head, the referee, I think he should have pitched him. I should get him out of there. And the only reason they weren't pitched is because they're well, both they superstars. Mm -hmm. And that's a fine example we set for everybody else around this league. So Dion, they can get away with it. Nobody else can. Dion was the one that started it. Dion should have been the one definitely pitched out of the game and if he does that he doesn't have the 92 yard interception which is the second longest in 49 history and this game's a lot closer and we'll talk about that indeed of course Dion got the 15 yard penalty nothing on would Andre you have pitched him? I, I would have kept him in there I would have found a way to keep him in there I wanted to keep the stars in there let's go take a look at the highlights and see you what happens would. now again we mentioned 28 to 3 in fact I would have kept him in there 28 3 take a look Steve Young starts it off quickly 10, 10 of 10, we talked to Jim Bates, defensive coordinator of Atlanta. He said we'll play mostly zone, no man-to-man, -man, and Young is killing him. Here, Hayward fumbles, coming off a big week last week. Tim McDonald scoops it up, 49-yard TD run. And this right, this just absolutely breaks their back. Two big turnovers in this game for the 49ers that led to touchdowns. Here's the 92-yarder. Had Dion been pitched, this would not have happened. And now let's do some hot dog showboat, Dion, which you do very well. There it is. There you go. High stepping. I'd love to see this guy pull a hamstring about right there doing something like that. <laughs> but instead, it goes as a score. Dion has 